Hello, beer troopers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppers. Today, doing a pretty much a throwback video, throwback Thursday slash review review of some beer. I'm really excited about being uh, revisiting, being revisiting. Just excited about revisiting. <laughs> so this is two lagers from Brauerei Zentner, aka Das Gute Münchenbacher Beer, and we're revisiting their Lager Beer and their Export. Both are natur trübes Bieren, meaning that they will contain haze because they're unfiltered. You'll see the bottom, it looks very clear in the glasses, but the bottom of the bottles, I see sediment and haze. So uh, I brought these back from my recent trip to Franconia. Uh, we visited Sintma, it was a pilgrimage, it was one of the best breweries we visited on the entire trip. We got to drink the Lager beer from the wooden barrel. And we got to drink the rest from tap or bottle. No, everything else was from tap, I think. So it was, that was three variants. So not a lot of beer. And we tried one beer straight from the tank, the uh, Weihnachtsbock. And I'll have a review of that coming soon. I'll beat a little bit late, but it's coming from Germany. And so, aka the man who used to hook me up with Sint is sending so, and he's helping me getting some, uh, which is awesome. So thanks a ton for that. And so it's a really cool brewery. They are in Münchenbach. That's why they also call it Münchenbacher Lagerbier. Das gute Münchenbacher. And they make fantastic unfiltered lagers. Uh, really, really good. Their Weizens are also really great, but the lagers is what I think shines. And they're regarded as some of the best lagers in the world. When I've reviewed them in the past, I've also given them good grades. But four years ago, when I reviewed these, I was not completely in the lager mindset yet. I was getting there. Like I graded these 90, which for me back then was really high for lagers. Uh, but these th those days are gone. These days I grade beers like this for what they're worth in terms of what they are and not about uh, for what they're not. Because back then I would often hold back with grades because, yeah, but it could have a bit more flavor, but it's not supposed to have more flavor than that. <laughs> and maybe I was not as good as dissecting all the balance nuances you get in these kind of beers. So dope, dope pilgrimage. If, you're, if you've never been to Mönchabach, do it. If you're in Bamberg, make the trip. Uh, and then go there and you know get a driver <laughs> go to the brewery because it's quite off the beaten path and and have fresh beer at the source because it's just amazing there the quality is so high so let's start off with the lager beer i think because this is the least hoppy of the two as far as i remember this is 5.5 percent alcohol and uh, i can't re we were told what the hops they used and everything pretty much in uh at the brewery, but I can't remember everything. We, we had a small tour, Stefan was very kind uh, to show us around. And um, we got to try again, why not be fresh from the tank and all that. But we got some info on most of the beers. And I uh, I remember that they're decoction mashed, but that's about it. <laughs> so, and that seems to be a key factor with some of the really, really good lagers. They are decoction mashed. So let's check out the lager beer first. So pours a, in this class, crystal clear, slightly hazy golden yellow color um yeah it looks nice in the glass it's got a white head and the lacing building already it looks marvelous so let's check out the aroma on the lager beer oh i just want to drink it right away <laughs> so these are actually expiring today and so that's why I'm cracking them. They give their beers a really short shelf life so you need to get on them fast when you when you get them and it's not necessarily because they will be bad, you know, more time in the bottle. A lot of people also age some of their beers, especially like the box. Uh, but it's just, I guess, for, for the freshness of taste uh, that the shelf life is, is fairly short. But yeah, it's, it's got such a vibrant malt character. Like, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if this is pure Pilsner malt. But for example, the Weihnachtsbock was pure Pilsner malt. And it had such layered, decadent maltiness. And it's just one malt. But it was decoction mashed. So, and I can't remember if it's one or two decoctions. I think, or I can't, I think it was two decoctions on the Weihnachts book. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's this really rich layered malt character. And which is interesting, Rasmus, who also works at the brewery, Bad Seed, said he got a bottle, he picked up a little bit of diacetyl. I'm not getting that whatsoever in this bottle. Uh, but I also don't have the uh, yeast in there. So I don't know if that. Plays a factor, but this really rich, deep, malty character, like it's got a bit of like fluffy wheat bread. It's got a, a little bit of a more rustic uh, type of bread as well, almost like Danish bundebol. Like it's like a bit more hefty than 
uh, wheat bread. And the reason why I know that is because my kids eat it. <laughs> and then a decent amount of hops too. It's slightly citric, slightly peppery, slightly grassy. But what really shines on this one is rich, rich malt character, but also vibrancy. It's, it feels very vibrant and alive and uh, well lagered too, because it's quite clean. Um, I think these were, was it 18 weeks or was it 15, 18 weeks? I can't remember. The longest lagered beer they do is the Vinox book. But yes, it smells awesome. Let's try it. Cheers. Like, if you can't appreciate this, you really need to drink more lagers. This is pretty much the state I remember this at the source. Surprisingly high level of hoppiness, actually, compared to what the aroma indicates. You just want to crush this beer. This is like the epitome of, like, Franconian lager. Like, if, if you've never tried Franconian lagers, I think Münchenbacher is one of the the, the main must-tries, uh, maybe alongside Wagner. Those are like probably my two favorites, if I'm just thinking back to what we had. The rich, rich layered malt character, the super clean, crisp kind of backbone to it as well. And the CO2 is quite interesting because it, it's high, but it still feels like soft and velvety and slick the mouthfeel. And then like a really nice spicy bitter hop bite on the back even though it's not like massively bitter like it's hop forward but balanced with the malt but it's just so vibrant and expressive and fresh too like freshly baked bread freshly baked wheat bread slightly rustic breadiness as well that like kind of oh I see, i'm just trying to remember bread variants but like in denmark we have like wheat breads and rye breads usually that's about it or maybe like not sourdough because it doesn't have like a sour twang it just has like that this more like there's some kind of rustic flour in a, in a bread, so it gets more of that like grayish color. Um, wow, that was a bad descriptor, but there's some of that. I'm I'm wondering if the uh, it's pale hops in this one as well, because I think that was what is in the Vi uh, Weihnachtsbock, and the bitterness seems a bit similar to the Weihnachtsbock actually, like quite spicy, quite really like loads of black pepper to it. I think online this lager beer is characterized as like killer beer, it's like beer, stuff like this. Uh, and that's, I think it's basically, basically because it's unfiltered, but it is lagered and everything. And a lot of beers in Franconia are called lager beers. They're called ungespunded lager beers, naturtrübes lager beers. And it's these kind of often beers like this that are slightly darker than like Helles and Pilsner. And with a little bit more malt character, but also some hop character so like to some of the like variations so it's like it's i don't know if it's really their own thing the lager beer down there because there's so many that does it there's a lager beer from in the cellar from from Wagner. there's a lager beer from um knoblach and i think they're all like categorized from the breweries as lager beers none of them call them killer beers and some of them also make killer beers so i wonder really like what would you characterize those at as i need to do some research on that up next the export Similar color. I mean, it's also very pale, golden yellow. I think oh, they could be a little bit similar. I think maybe just the lager beer has a slight more shade of orange to it. Uh, but otherwise, you can see some specks in it. It's definitely unfiltered. It also had a very nice frothy, fluffy white head. And as far as I remember drinking it down there at the source, it was just a bit more hoppy. So let's take out the aroma on the export. Hmm. Actually, interestingly enough, now I'm getting more of a rich malt character on this one. Uh, more rich than the... And less hops than the, the lager beer. It's really hard to smell because there's like so much beer in the glass because I was pouring it up like crazy for photos. But it's mainly like, again, very noble hop driven characteristics. Very spicy, also very clean, very crisp smelling. Lots of doughy breadiness to this one. But also the, the kind of like wheat breadiness and like toasty kind of, not toasty, but toast. Like that's what we call some of the pale wheat breads in Denmark. Yeah, it's actually, that room is on it. It's really hard to smell. There's too much beer in the glass. Let's drink some and see how it is. And then we can smell it along the way. Cheers.
Mm. Yeah. Well, that's a tough choice. Um, the export has a little bit more fruitiness to it. I'm definitely getting a little bit more of a floral vibe and a grassiness, maybe citric too, whereas like the lager beer was loads of pepper. But interesting, the malt characteristics on them are fairly similar, similar. But like this is like beer that's so much about simplicity and cleanliness and being like tight and awesome. Like it's not about bombasticness. It will never be. Like these beers are just about purity, uh, simplicity, and like um, drinkability. Like these are beers that you drink in big amounts and you're never gonna be tired of them. But they are done in their styles to just like pretty much perfect degree. Like there's not a lot of lager that comes close to this. And when I actually, it's funny, when I think of American brewers trying to replicate like lagers, if I think to Suarez and stuff like that, I feel like this is similar to what they are trying to replicate. But these have more hop character than some of their interpretations, actually, I think, at least, and more bitterness. But everything is, again, is balanced. It's not like it's sharp or anything. It's that, That's a big factor with these. Crazy balance. Mm. I think I like the export more. Just because of the hop character. It's more fruity. It's a bit more floral. It's a bit more zesty. It's a bit more singy. Although maybe the bitterness is somewhat similar. Although this feels maybe a little bit lighter. Like it almost feels like this is more aroma hop driven than the lager beer. So maybe I, I was, I'm actually drinking the, the wrong way around. But yeah, beautiful, rich, also crackery and biscuity malt character, this one. I think that one was more bready and doughy. But this definitely has some crackery kind of brightness and lightness to it compared to the lager beer. It's like up front, it's on the aroma, especially I was talking about like layered malt character and being more rich, but it doesn't feel more rich compared to the lager beer. And that's also one of the things I noted down there. Like a lot of the lager beers were the ones with richer malt characters of the pale beers, whereas the exports and hitters and whatnot were often softer. Although some hitters, like there's, again, always variation from brewer to brewer. Some of this were more rich. I'm loving the fruitiness on it and the brightness and the snappiness. It's almost towards a, pil a Franconian interpretation of a Pilsner, uh, actually. Because a lot of the Franconian interpretations are like this, decent bitterness and everything. Not as high as like North German and maybe not as bombastically fruity. But it's pretty much similar to something like that. Um, and again, it, it, it's very much similar flavors to the lager beer. It's just like a little bit more emphasis on lighter, brighter malt character and that like rich malt character and then more fruity hop flavor to me. Um, really damn awesome beers. This is like the purity and essence of Franconian brewing tradition really. And that's like, I think one of the re main reasons why you really need to drink these beers. Like when you drink these and you go around, you really like, this is like the, probably one of the eye opener breweries. And I think for a lot of people it is. And a lot of lager geeks make that pilgrimage to Munchenbach to visit Zidna. This is just fucking awesome. And you can drink this by the bucket. I think this even has a slight touch of a sulfuric note to it. But in such a low threshold that it just it works a little bit as a like, uh, just like a, a layering kind of complexity. So I think these are world class Franconian lagers. Like if you want to experience the Franconian way of making lagers, this is probably one of the biggest recommendations alongside the Wagner beers. Again, you'll see a few reviews of Wagner as well because I really think they were amazing. Um, but yeah, Munchenbacher, it's a place that's for sure worth the pilgrimage. I'm going to go 95 on both of these and bump these up from the last 90 I gave a few years ago. I think these bottles are also fresher than when I had them uh, back then, although they expire today, but they're still really fresh. Again, I picked them up at the brewery in the well first weekend of December, so I've not even had these bottles for a month. But the big, big thing with this is like layers, really loads of layers but soft layers, uh, which these beer styles are all about. And then also insane drinkability. Like you could drink this, like I drank pretty much half a bottle of each in this review, although this is also a long review, but I will give the slight edge to the export beer, I think. Like I think both are fantastic. But I like the export a little bit more. 
I'd love to, like, they never really, of course, do new styles at uh, Zintma, but it'd be so fun to see them tackle a Pilsner. Um, I think this is the closest you'll get to a Pilsner from them, but it's just so good. World-class brewery, like, again, top-tier lager producer from Franconia. If you've never tried their beers, it's a damn must, and you should seek them out and try and find them online. Or, for sure, make the pilgrimage, because if you love lager, going to Bamba and visiting Franconia is a must. So... If you guys had a chance to try Das Gute Münchenbacher, aka, well, Paul Eisetner, aka Das Gute Münchenbacher Lagerbier and Export, let me know what you thought of them. Such awesome beers. I can't wait to try their Weihnachtsbock because it was great at the source from the tank. <laughs> so if you guys had these in re recent times, let me know what you thought of them. Wonderful beers. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, give the video a thumbs up, enjoy it, ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I want to say cheers in the one that just etches the other one a little bit out the export. And see you guys in another beer video.